If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, welcome back to Nexus Core. I'm Richard, and we're doing more Keter Sanctuary. We're doing my Hex Warp Aquamarine deck profile. This is the support from DBT10, as well as a little bit of support from Festival Collection, but it's pretty minor, but technically this is a post-Festival Collection or Festival Booster 2023 deck profile. So without further ado, we're just gonna jump right into the Hex Orb deck. Starting off with our ride line, we're doing the traditional Sorceress ride line, but I splashed in the Maple. So the reason I'm doing the Maple is because I don't really think the Counter Blast draw from Circle Magus is that necessary for the ride line. It's nice, but I feel like I'd rather use my Counter Blast for other card effects. So instead I'm running the Pink Moth Girl Maple, which is when it when it's in the drop zone and you Persona Ride, you can call it to the Rear Guard Circle from drop zone and it gets 5k. It doesn't get its glitter effect, but it does help fill your board. And since Aquamarine has effects when you Persona Ride, I felt like it kind of fit the theme. But Pentagleam is pretty typical when you ride Hex Orb Sorceress who look at top three, and then you put them back on the top of your deck in any order. And since Aquamarine counts as Hex Orb Sorceress, the ride line still works. The new skill is it gets drive plus one when you press on a ride. And its second skill is when you get a trigger, you can soul blast one, choose a rear guard and restand it. So I like the fact that you can use the skill as soon as you ride it, whereas the previous X orb, it was just additional power for triggers. I like being able to multi-attack more. So being able to get that off right when you hit grade three is really nice. And then obviously you'll soul blast the maple for its cost. And then next turn you ride and you call it back. So. There's some consistency going on here that I really like. Then we're going to our grade threes. We're running three more copies of Aquamarine so that we can Persona Ride and see it. And then we're running one copy of Gwendolyn. So what Gwendolyn does is when you Persona Ride and, or if you Persona Ride this turn and it attacks, your opponent has to guard with two or more at a time from their hand. So since you're restanding rear guards, you could swing, they guard with two, restand it, they have to guard with two again. So makes it harder if your Gwendolyn has a lot of power and a crit and your opponent can't just PG it because they have to drop two at a time. Uh, but obviously they can use Elementaria, but we're not gonna get into the specifics here. And lastly for grade threes, one Gratis Grata Dale, which activates your Persona Ride if you are on grade three at the start of your turn and you didn't ride again, you can Persona Ride. So it just gives you like a fourth copy of Hex Orb, so to speak. So this is the Regali piece that we're working with here, just so we can keep up with the Persona riding in the deck. Then for grade twos, Spiral Cutie Angel. Spiral Cutie acts as a good discard fodder, so when you discard it, you can Soul Blast one, put it back on bottom, draw a card. Kind of helps you just get more cards out of it, and you can also, you know, pull the Mabel out of your soul, which is nice. Second skill is uh, when it's placed in your Persona Road, you look at the top two cards of your deck, Put one in your hand and you put the other one on the top or bottom. So Hex Orb's whole thing is about trying to make sure you manipulate your deck so that there is a trigger on the top of your deck somewhere. So this just kind of helps with that. And since the deck likes Super Persona Ride, that helps as well. But it's mostly there for the discard fodder and Avery Persona Ride, the skill is still good. So I do want to run a play set. Then running four copies of Fulgan Wizard. A Fulgan Wizard's skill is when it swings and you have a stand, Vanguard of Sorceress in its name. You can look at the top card of your deck and you may put it into your soul or you can leave it back on top. So if you know it's a non-trigger, you just put it in your soul, which fills soul for free, which is cool. Second skill is when your check reveals a trigger unit, it gets 5K, so two checks, that's plus 10K. The fact that this skill doesn't have any cost, it just means that your Vanguard has to not attack first before this. It's a pretty good card. This for sure is gonna be a playset in the deck. Then four copies of Octoray Sorceress. So Octoray Sorceress is from set six, but still has a really good effect. On place, if you have a grade three with Sorceress in its name, count plus one, look at top two, and you can either choose to put both cards in your hand, put both on the top of your deck, or put one in hand, put one on top. If you put two cards in your hand, you have to choose a card from your hand and put it on the bottom of your deck. This is just a really good card to get you hand advantage. It's also really good if you just want to add Hex Orbs to your hand. And its second effect is during the battle of this attack, if you're Sun Road, it gets 5k. You know, that's also nice. That kind of goes with the whole Persona Ride thing with the Sorceress deck. But this is mostly here for that kind of last to get cards in your hand, which I like a lot. I am running a lot of grade twos, so bear with me on this. I'm running three copies of Quadricast Sorceress, which is basically gives you more soul. When it's placed on rear, you have a Vanguard Sorceress. Look at the top two, 
put them back on the top of your deck, and then you may soul charge. So if you see trigger and non-trigger, you put that non-trigger on top, boom, soul charge. Gives you soul for hex orb, and you know, that's kind of mostly what it's there for, but it also kind of helps you thin out the deck. Putting non-triggers into your soul so they're not stuck in your deck is also really cool. So this is still just a really, really good card. Just running it at the three because of space, um, but I like it at the three, it works fine. And lastly, I am writing two copies of the order card, which is Wisdom of Beginning That Cleared the World. What this does is you can count boss one when you play it, draw two cards, then you choose two cards from your hand, you call them to rear, that have to be the same grade or less than your vanguard. And you have to discard the rest if you, you know, didn't call anything. Basically, this just helps you get more hands so you can fill a bigger board. It also kind of helps you make it easier for you to kind of draw into your hex orb since there really isn't a lot of cards that allow you to just add a hex orb to hand. I do like it a lot. That is it for the grade two. So um, since pretty much the goal here is to have a front row to swing with, that's why I'm running so many like little beat sticks. And also we do have uh, Gandiva running around. So your board is constantly going to be cleared. So it's nice to be able to replenish your board with some pretty good beaters. And then for grade ones, four copies of Replenishment Angel. So this is also a really, really nice card I like for the deck. What it does is when it boosts, if you have a standing grade three Vanguard, you kind of bless one, look at the top two cards of your deck and you put them on the top of your deck in any order and then you can put the rest on the bottom. So this just basically lets you look at top card and decide do you want them both on top, both on bottom, one of each. So it just helps you manipulate the deck really well to kind of set up for your Aquamarine swing. So I do like this card. Ending off with our grade ones, we've got our three PGs, our Palladium Zeals, and our one Elementary Sanctitude. Uh, pretty normal stuff here. You, you know, you got your PGs that don't need to discard if you have one or less in hand, and then your Elementaria to get around Guard Restrict, and if you're playing against a G unit, it's free. Standard Sentinel lineup here, and these grade ones are just really, really helpful. There are a lot of decks that run other grade ones that fill your board, or some people are running the Painkiller Angels. These are good alternatives. You want to play around the grade two lineup and drop some grade twos. You add more of those grade ones into your deck. Feel free to do that as well. You know, there's nothing nothing wrong with that. But this is what I've been working with so far. Then we're getting into the triggers. This is our Festival Booster Edition, which is Spiritual King of Ignition, Valnut. Uh, Valnut is really, really cool because what it does is it give your rear guard, or standing rear guard, the ability at the end of the battle this unit attacked, you can restand it. So what's really cool is because of Aquamarine, you trigger check the over trigger, you use Aquamarine's effect first, which is when your trigger is revealed for your drive check, you soul blast one, you restand a rear guard. For the sake of example, that's our rear guard. Uh, and then you can apply the Val Valmut skill to give it to a standing rear guard so that at the, at the end of the battle that it attacks again, it just restands and that has that 100 million power, which is really, really cool. This is great for a hex orb. Definitely recommend for a lot of Keter decks. A lot of Keter Sanctuary decks do like this over trigger a lot. So if you're planning on playing Keter Sanctuary going forward, I do recommend picking up this over trigger. It is really, really helpful. Then we got our four skill crits. I never call these triggers to the rear guard circle, but on the off chance that you have to, at least it helps fill your soul. It can maybe fix some columns, but it's like the extra 2k doesn't really do much, but uh, it's better than a vanilla, I guess. That's really up for debate. Um, I would say the vanillas work just fine as well. So nothing crazy there. And then I am running four more vanillas. This is the nice little common we got from Festival Booster and I just like the artwork, so we're running it. So then we're running three fronts, the all pack, because all pack is good and it's got shield. I don't want to run draw triggers for now because I feel like I go through the deck so much with all the soul charging and the manipulating the deck, so I just don't really want to feel like I'm going to run into an issue where I'm going to deck out. But I could play around the, issue, the ratios and might drop the fronts completely because unlike the old Hex Orb, the new Hex Orb doesn't really focus around crits and fronts, so it just focuses on triggers, so you can run any trigger you want trigger lineup you want in general. So, but for now I am writing the all pack because the shield is still good. Then last but not least, I'm still doing my four vanilla heels. This is a new heel artwork that I really like. That was in the festival booster, Rikula, and our hardiness tier, which is whenever a rear guard, or whenever a unit has two or more crit and it didn't gain that crit by a trigger, 
This gets 15 shields. So this card alone makes your Vanguard a 38k base. With triggers, it's 48k. So if you're like early game against Gandiva, you can guard with this. You can use it against Upsy Guide and Ava. So it does come up in the competitive environment. So I do like it at the one. And that was it for the trigger lineup. So now we're pretty much done with the deck. So I guess I can kind of show a quick example of kind of the combo you're going to be expecting to use when you're playing with Hex Orb. All right, so you're getting ready to go into your Hex Orb ride and you got a pretty okay hand going off from the get-go. So this is pretty much what you're kind of working with. So let's just say for this example, we're just going to go right into our discard for our Hex Orb ride. Then we're going to activate the effect of Pentaclean, which is when your Hex Orb is written on top of the Vanguard. We're going to look at the top three and we're going to rearrange the order however we see fit. Kind of get an idea from what's in our hand. We know that we can draw some cards or we can reveal some cards. So typically we want to put normal units on the top of the deck just so that we know that we can play around with the ratios here. For this example, maybe I want to have a card in soul and then maybe I want to have a card in hand. Let's just go ahead and do this. We're going to put this in our hand. This is going to go into our soul. So we're going to leave these two on top and then the trigger is going to be the third card. So then starting off, we play Octary Sorceress, which lets us kind of last. Look at the top two cards. One card we're going to put into our hand and the other card is going to go on top because we're going to use the effect of Effluvian Wizard for when it attacks, it's going to be able to put that normal unit that's at the top of our deck into our soul. And then that third unit is going to be our trigger unit. Just to help out and see what that fourth card is, we can use Replenishment Angel to kind of keep manipulating the deck. Starting off, Wizard will attack. Using its skill, we look at the top card, choose to put it in the soul or in the top of our deck. So we're going to put that in the soul. Now we can swing with our other rear guard swing using the effect since we have a stand vanguard with punch by angel looks us at the top two we can choose which order we want them in and we do see a non-trigger for that second card so we're going to put the trigger on top non-trigger on the bottom so we still don't know what that second drive check is going to be but at least we have a better chance of seeing a trigger our hex orb swings our opponent you know decides to guard or not we get a trigger trigger check activates hex orb's ability we're gonna soul blast that maple for our persona right turn next turn. Restand a rear guard, give it the trigger effects, go into our second check. Cool, we got another trigger, which means X Orb, which is not once per turn. We can soul blast one, restand a rear guard, and then give it the effects. So two crits, because we're just that lucky, and we've manipulated the soul in the deck just a bit so we can kind of keep this going every single turn. So then for the next turn, if we're lucky enough, we have an Aqua Marine for our persona ride. We can use the Spiral Cutie for that Persona Ride turn as well. But the idea here is to kind of work around with your drive checks, utilizing that multi-attack to get a lot of swings and kind of, you know, dig through the deck for our Persona Rides, dig through the deck for the over trigger and kind of go for the kill that way. So that is very simply how the deck works. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate the support. Quick shout out to our sponsor for this video, which is 50 Cards. If you haven't checked out 50 Cards yet, they got Vanguard singles, they got Shadowverse singles, they got Vanguard bundles, booster boxes, sleeves, everything you guys need to update your decks. I highly recommend looking into those bundles, especially if you're gonna be sticking with a specific nation like I kind of do for Keter Sanctuary. What I pretty much do is I pick up every single Keter Sanctuary bundle going forward so that no matter what, I have a full playset of every single Keter Sanctuary card going forward every time I'm updating all my decks. That's pretty much it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.